Now I know that for many of you this is going to be a review but it bears going over again if you're going to be entering the commercial refrigeration arena here you are going to need to become intimately familiar with superheat and evaporators and and TXVs. So we're going to just talk about how evaporators absorb heat and go through that one part of the refrigeration cycle that the evaporator is part of. So the refrigerant leaves a metering device. It's about 25% uh, vapor, 75% liquid. So it is a mixture of both vapor and liquid. And the warm air coming across the evaporator coil causes the refrigerant to boil or change state. So it's changing state throughout the evaporator from liquid to vapor. Now that takes a, a tremendous amount of heat to change state. For example, uh, if you take a pound of water, it takes one BTU to raise the temperature one degree, but to boil that water, that same one pound of water, it takes 970 times more heat energy. So that boiling or changing of state is uh, absorbs a lot of heat and that heat that causes the change of state is called latent heat. Once that um, refrigerant vapor grabs all of the heat that it could possibly absorb and, it's, and that that refrigerant saturated vapor turns into a hundred percent vapor, no more liquid, no more changing of state, it can now only absorb sensible heat and this is just um, a little bit of heat. It has no effect whatsoever ever on the temperature of the box but it does have a great effect on the operation of the unit. That's called the superheat, that sensible heat. The amount of temperature that you raise that vapor above its boiling point. Okay, so let's take a look at this. Evaporation starts at the metering device and this is now saturated refrigerant and it's at 40 degrees and it is changing state and boiling off and changing state and boiling off and absorbing a tremendous amount of heat energy. As it gets down here to the bottom of the, of the evaporator, it's now completely boiled off in 100% vapor. It's still at 40 degrees. At this point from this part in the evaporator to where it begins to leave the evaporator, it's designed by the manufacturer to pick up 10 degrees of superheat at this point and then as it travels through the rest of the suction line back to the compressor it's now at 60 degrees with 20 degrees of superheat. So superheat is the coil outlet temperature minus the evaporator temperature. Let's, let's back up. So superheat is the coil outlet temperature right here fully evaporated minus the evaporator temperature. Now that evaporator temperature is what we get by measuring the pressure and converting it to our temperature like we did for the TD. So at 69 PSIG the evaporator temperature is 40 degrees and as it leaves the evaporator the refrigerant at this point is at 50 degrees so we have a 10 degrees of superheat. So if the superheat is too high we're calling it starving the evaporator that that means there's not enough refrigerant. If the su superheat is too low it's flooding which means there's too much refrigerant and I'll show you where, to, where we take the uh, the coil outlet temperature and then when we get to metering devices we'll cover superheat in uh, great great detail and how that is affected by the uh, TXVs and cap tubes. Okay so the su you can't, right here is where the sensing bulb is so you should be measuring your evaporator temperature the physical temperature for superheat at this point not out at the at the compressor like you do for residential air conditioning systems. And it doesn't show it in this picture but a lot of times there's going to be a suction line port right here where you can measure your uh, coil temperature using your pressure. Alright so that's the end of this lesson just a quick review of superheat. We'll get into more detail on that in uh, lesson number six.